Now we're going to take a look at what happens when the um, second order differential equation model of the system is critically damped. That is, what happens when the damping ratio of the second order system is identically equal to 1. Well, from our analysis of the eigenvalues, or the characteristic, the roots of the characteristic equation, we know that in this case, the system is called critically damped. And the characteristic roots are um, real and repeated, and they're given by the value of um, negative damping ratio times the natural frequency. But since the damping ratio is uh, identically equal to 1, then it's just the negative um, natural frequency. All right, so again, we're going to start uh, trying to solve this system the same, same way that we did um, with uh, the other systems. Uh, we know that we have two eigenvalues because this really could be stated as plus or minus zero here. So uh, for this system now we need to um, uh, determine what the homogeneous solution is going to look like. Now we can start off by saying that x uh, homogeneous as a function of time, so the solution to this homogeneous equation is going to be some unknown constant times e to the lambda 1 times time plus some different constant, b, times e to the lambda 2 times time. But since lambda 1 and lambda 2 are the same value, this will not work for us because essentially these two say the same thing. All right. So you may recall from, um, from your study of uh, differential equations that we have to do something a little bit different when we have the case for repeated roots, or real repeated roots. And in this case, what we need to do is we need to add, a, um, add another term um, so, that, um, so that these are linearly independent of each other. And the way that we do that is uh, we also add, um, we do e to the lambda times time, and then we add a second term that is linearly independent, and the way that we make it linearly independent is we multiply by the variable, the independent variable, which is time in this case. So now we're going to go bt times e to the lambda t. Okay. So now what we can do is uh, we can solve, we know that this is going to be a solution to the uh, uh, homogeneous equation right here. Uh, from our differential equation studies. And what we need to do is we need to determine the values of the unknown constants a and b. All right, and to do that, we're going to have to apply our initial conditions. So I'm going to evaluate this, as well as the derivative of this, um, at time equals 0. And we know that they have to be equal to x0 um, and v0. All right, but before I can do that, I need to take the derivative of this term, of this uh, homogeneous solution, with respect to time. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. All right, the derivative of the homogeneous solution for this one, th for this term, will be a lambda e to the lambda t. Now here we have to uh, deal with the product rule because we have two terms uh, that both involve the time uh, variable in them. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is take uh, the derivative of bt which will just be b and multiply it by e to the lambda t. And then the second thing that I need to do is I need to take the derivative of the exponential term and multiply it by the first term. So that will give me b lambda t e to the lambda t. Okay, so now that I have um, the assumed solution for the homogeneous equation and then I have the derivative of that, I can apply my initial conditions. All right, so as I apply my initial conditions, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute time equals 0 in. And when time is equal to 0 for the uh, homogeneous solution right here, it's going to be e raised to the 0 is 1. So I wind up with a plus b times 0 times e to the 0 is 0. All right, so that term goes away. And we know that, based on our um, initial conditions, that must be equal to the initial condition here, x0. All right, so from that, we learn that the coefficient a is equal to the initial condition, x0. 
to find the value of b, I'm going to have to apply um, the derivative initial condition. So evaluating the derivative of the homogeneous solution at time equals zero, I'm going to find that this first term right here is going to go to a lambda. The second term right here will go to b. And this third term right here is going to go to zero because if I substitute zero in here, that term is going to go away. It's going to be evaluated to zero. All right, and we know that that, the derivative um, at time zero, must be equal to v naught, or our derivative initial condition. All right, so now um, solving for b, I find that b is going to be equal to v naught minus a lambda. But we also, also already know that a is equal to um, x naught, so I can rewrite b as being v naught minus x naught times the eigenvalue, or the uh, characteristic root. Okay, so by doing this, now I've solved the general second order homogeneous critically damped case, where I know that the general solution is going to look like this form right here. And if I know, if I can determine the eigenvalues, um, or excuse me, the, uh, the roots of the characteristic equation, or the eigenvalue, which in this case is going to be real and repeated, if I know that value along with the initial condition and the derivative initial condition, I can find the values of the unknown constants a and b just by substituting them in here. Okay, so again, we don't need to go through the full differential equation solution any longer. We have the general solution here, which is listed on page uh, 126 um, of your uh, course pack um, right here. We have uh, the same results that we derived uh, just now.